I, like many autistic people, experience stomach issues and stomach distress. There are a multitude of reasons and triggers for my tummy troubles. Today I'm going to share about my experience of being autistic and having problems with my stomach and digestion and why I think so many autistic people also struggle with this. And if you would like to know more, please do stay tuned. Unfortunately, stomach issues, as I've said, is one of those things that is painfully common for a lot of autistic people. I have stomach issues for a variety of reasons. One big thing that impacts my stomach as an autistic person are my sensory issues. Smells can be something that can cause me to get sick to my stomach or sensory overload can cause me to get vertigo where everything is spinny and I get disoriented and that can make me nauseous. My sensory system is one major component of my stomach problems and my stomach distress. In addition, sensory issues also impact the food I am able to take in via taste. I am someone who is taste sensitive. Foods that are bland or don't have a lot of taste will make me feel queasy and I can't, I literally will get sick and you know, stuff won't go down if, if it doesn't taste the right way. Bland foods are just an absolute no for me. I am sensory seeking in that taste area of my senses, of my personal sensory profile. Other autistic people might be sensory avoiding in the area of taste where they are going to eat much more bland foods. I, on the other hand, am eating food that is really, really heavily seasoned and so spicy that I'm crying. It's gonna burn on the way out, even to the detriment of my digestive system. That's another thing. Seeking out foods that are really, really bold and often too much for my digestive system uh, and not always great for me but that's just what I'm craving and that's what I want to eat. Another thing about my experience with food as an autistic person is sometimes I don't sense I am hungry until I am really really hungry to the point where I'm hangry or I am about to pass out already and I'm getting dizzy and I'm really not okay anymore and that's how I realize I'm hungry. It's like, oh, I'm not feeling okay. I'm really woozy. Uh, oh, I haven't eaten anything at all today. That sense of sensing when I need to eat is not always connected in, in my brain, body, stomach connection. It doesn't work the way it should always. Same thing with going to the bathroom. It's like, oh shoot, I'm gonna die if I don't go pee right now because I have been ignoring my body and just tuned out of my body for hours. Also, if I am under periods of stress or anxiety, my desire to eat food and sense hunger. I become very unhungry and I don't crave food or have any desire for food at all. But if I'm not doing well and I'm stressed and I have too much on my plate in life, <laughs> not food on my plate, too much on my plate in life, my appetite is often one of the first things to go and I can just waste away from not feeling like eating, which is not a good thing. Plus when this happens, a lot of times food also will start to not taste good and won't be appetizing to me anymore. So even when I want to eat, I will try to eat and food will be just so gross that I literally cannot keep it in my mouth, especially if I'm stressed or anxious. Also, I, like a lot of autistic people, have foods that don't 
digest well. And I'm not saying all autistic people should avoid gluten or all autistic people should avoid any kind of one particular food item. For me, gluten is a big problem and that stuff is in everything and was in everything growing up. It was one of the main things I ate. It was actually one of the main things that the doctor recommended my mom feed me when I was having some problems with crackers and chicken noodle soup, which is all gluten and chicken water, which was completely counterproductive to my health because of having foods that would make me sick to my stomach that I was unaware of what would make me sick as a kid and growing up it made me have some unhealthy relationships with food. I was very hesitant to eat or try new foods because of not knowing sensory uh, things, texture or flavor or if it is something that was going to really mess up my stomach. Also, because I would get sick to my stomach so often, as a young person, I literally had a phobia of throwing up because I threw up so much. That translated into me also being afraid of eating and trying foods because I was so afraid that it would make me sick to my stomach. Now, as an autistic adult, and even as an autistic young person, I had and have safe foods. And though I do branch out and try different foods from time to time, typically I do have some staples, whatever current food I am on, available at all times, because I know that's a food that's good for my stomach, good for my sensory, is always going to fill that sensory taste texture need that I have and is a good food I can count on. Every now and then that safe food will become suddenly not safe anymore. I'll have a lot of that safe food on hand in my pantry and all of a sudden I'll go to eat it and it'll be like, I can't eat this anymore. It's terrible. It's no longer good, which, which is totally a thing that happens. So, you know, when a food is not safe, there is nothing I can do to make myself eat it. I've been sitting eating a salad that was my favorite salad for months at work that I ate every day for lunch and then all of a sudden I take a bite of that salad and it's making me sick to my stomach and the more I eat it, the more I know I am going to be physically sick because all of a sudden my favorite salad was no longer safe. That's the other thing with this. Kids who have food sensory issues, sometimes adults have the wrong idea that, oh, when they're hungry, they'll eat. We cannot eat things that are not sensory safe or not safe foods. In addition, with those of us who may not sense hunger, we may not know when we're hungry and we may not eat when we're hungry and we may pass out from not realizing we're hungry. That's something that still happens to me even as an adult. Now I get that hungry to where I'm going to pass out. These food intake restrictions can have really significant impacts on someone's health. If you are only eating, say, fettuccine alfredo every day for lunch and dinner and breakfast and nothing else, obviously you're going to be missing a lot of nutrition. When I am eating popsicles every day and not eating any real food, yeah, that's me not getting a lot of great nutrition, for example, because sometimes all I want to eat is popsicles and everything else sounds horrible and I'm not eating really food, which is not good. As a young person, all I wanted to eat for every meal was fettuccine alfredo and I wouldn't eat anything else. It was that one thing or I would just go hungry because nothing else in my brain registered as food. It was the only thing. And maybe that comes from the autistic tendency to be really fixated on something and like once you get it in your mind, it's really hard to let it go. For me as a young person, Fettuccine Alfredo was my lunch. Lucky Charms was my breakfast. I don't remember what my dinner was. It might have been Fettuccine Alfredo again for dinner. I'm not really sure. Eventually, the adults figured out a way to sneak some broccoli in there by telling me I could be a dinosaur and eat these little trees because dinosaurs were one of my special interests. I mean, mixing that with the Fettuccine Alfredo was a way to get me to eat something that wasn't beige in color. All right. That's the video. If you're still around, you've made it to the end, go ahead and hit that thumbs up and let me know I did not lose you in transit to this point. 
Thanks for sticking around. I appreciate you. Also, I would love to know if you yourself experience any of the stomach, eating, food, digestive, sensory issues that I mentioned today and what that is like for you. Also, if you have a current safe food, what is your current safe food? Have you ever had a safe food suddenly become not safe anymore? It really sucks when that happens. Thanks to everyone who shares your own experiences. I appreciate you adding to the conversation. Also, thanks to everyone who leaves your feedback, video suggestions, your questions. Of course, thanks to the Patreon subscribers, Facebook channel members, Twitter super followers, and those of you who do that little monetary subscription to help fund the blog with things like website hosting, transcriptioning software, closed captioning software, the video editing software I use on my phone to put out the short format videos. I could not do this without the help of you, the readers. So thank you so much. Also, I want to throw this out there. Thanks to those of you who have helped with the monetary subscription because you have made it possible to get our first book out, and I'm saying ours because I couldn't have done it without you. First book about neurodiversity and organizational work workplace culture coming out at the end of 2022. Stay tuned for more information about that. I'm really excited that it could not be possible without you. So thank you all. I will see you next Wednesday. Bye.